In Philip K. Dick's Valis, he says, We appear to be memory coils, DNA carriers capable of experience in a computer-like thinking system, which although we have correctly recorded and stored thousands of years of experiential information, each of us possesses somewhat different deposits from all the other life forms. There is a malfunction, a failure of memory retrieval. Therefore, it is in the process of self-repair, which includes rebuilding our sub-circuit via linear and orthogonal time changes, as well as continual signaling to us to stimulate blocked memory banks within us to fire and hence retrieve what is there. Whoa. Where am I? You're inside the Animus. Which is... It's a projector that renders genetic memories in three dimensions. Genetic memory? Seems you'll need a bit of a tutorial. Very well. We'll start simple. What is a memory, Mr. Miles? It's the recollection of a past event. Specific to the individual remembering the event. Yeah, sure. What if I told you that the human body not only housed an individual's memory, but the memories of his ancestors as well? Genetic memory, if you will. The structure of DNA as we know it is made up of letters, represented by the base pairs ATCG. These form words that are instructions to build an amino acid compound. There are 64 such words, and one or more of these words represent the instruction and information necessary to create one of the 22 amino acids used to create the protein structure of the living body. You could say our bodies are made up of a living language. The I Ching is a mysterious ancient book used for centuries in China as an oracle to predict the flow of changes. It consists of 64 hexagrams in a matrix of 8x8 that could be used to predict the changes of yin and yang energy manifesting in the world. When there is too much yin energy, it will eventually be compensated by yang energy, and vice versa, like a flowing and resonating rhythmic change, constantly balancing between the two extremes. In 1968, Mary Louise von Franz, a disciple of Carl Jung, published an essay in which she speculated that there might be some structural link between the I Ching and DNA. A year later, Dr. Martin Schoenberger published an article in which he presented the astonishing parallels between the natural science of the I Ching and the latest discoveries of nuclear genetics. In Bruce Lipton's book, Biology of Belief, he mentions how biomembranes function like quartz crystal, as they are conduits of consciousness. The membrane is the brain of the cell. It sends and receives information. Our genetic code tunes us into a certain program, which we download into what David Icke calls the body computer. Carl Jung even suggested that his theories of archetypes were closely related to our genetic expression. Indeed, not only is our DNA a crystalline transmitter receiver, but so too is water, which is approximately 70% of our body weight, and many neurotransmitters and psychotropic substances like DMT are also crystalline. Recent research by Russian scientists have found that the sequencing of the codons of the non-coding regions of DNA, approximately 97% of the genome, follow the rules of some kind of biological language. Research further revealed that the codons actually form words and sentences, just like our ordinary human languages follows rules of grammar. Ziff's law proves that not only does junk DNA possess features of a language, but also may in fact be a language like any other human language. This research suggests that the origins of language may be surprisingly attributed to DNA. According to these findings, our DNA is not only responsible for the construction of our bodies, but also serves as data storage and communication. The vibrational behavior of DNA was also studied, and experiments showed that live DNA will always react to modulated laser rays, and even to radio waves if the proper frequencies are being used. This scientifically explains why affirmations, hypnosis, and other such methods have such strong effects on human beings. It is entirely normal and natural for our DNA to react to language. These studies prove the importance of our thoughts, words, and language on our very being, since they have the inherent ability to shape us into the person we are. Could it be that language is like a pheromone of DNA? Could it be possible by looking at the structure of DNA for us to reconstruct a new syntax, grammar, and vocabulary? The esoteric work of Falconelli suggests that fragments of the original language of light can be found in the divinatory systems of those used by shamans and initiates.